Hello Internet, so nice to see you! Today we see how to learn all the notes on your guitar fretboard forever, so that they become completely second nature. Would you like to be able to see all the notes on your guitar fretboard, so that you instantly know, for instance, how to find an F note on the second string? Or instantly know without thinking that if you play the first string at the 10th fret, you play a D note? Today we see how to do just that. I already did a video on int, but there were some questions and I wasn't super clear on everything and also in the ears I perfected this method. So here's right now is the definitive method to learn all the notes on your guitar fretboard forever. Why would you like to learn all the notes on your fretboard? Well, in my experience, I see that finding the notes on the fretboard is what slows down most guitar players. Whenever you want to find the position of a chord or a scale, or whenever you are playing and you want to hit specific note, it seems like the act of finding the note is the slowest part of the whole process. So if you can speed this up, you gain a lot. And speed in this sense can completely change the way in which you play. When you can find your note faster, the kind of music that you play, the kind of mental process that is going on, the kind of things you can do change completely. Now, some people are going to ask me, but can't I learn my guitar fretboard only by patterns or intervals? Well, I'm going to do another video about that because it's a very interesting question, but the short answer is no. You have to learn all the notes on your fretboard. There is really no shortcut for that. This is a corner you cannot cut you have to learn notes on your fretboard, otherwise you will always be limited on what you can do on your guitar. And the worst thing about it is that until you actually learn the notes on your fretboard, you're not even gonna see what you are missing. Now, before you start getting scared by the magnitude of this task, learning the note is not as hard as you think. Some people think it's impossible, but it's actually easy if, one, you are willing to practice it for five minutes a day, five minutes, I'm not asking anything more. And two, you are going to follow the instructions I'm gonna give you to the letter. So here's how to do it. I'm gonna explain a series of exercises. They are all simple and I want you to do them in this order, even and especially if they are easy for you. Remember that the goal is not just to learn the notes on your fretboard. The goal is to make the process super fast so that you can instantly see where the notes are. So even if the exercise is easy for you, do it anyway. And if instead, if the exercise is hard, take it slower, you're gonna get through it. Before you even start doing those exercises, get yourself a diagram of all the notes on the guitar fretboard. Here's one for you. This is for standard tuning. If you're using a different tuning, you need a different diagram, of course. Exercise number one, the basic exercise. We're gonna restrict ourselves to frets one to 12 of your guitar, no open strings. Then you're gonna decide one note and we're gonna pick only natural notes. So no sharps, no flats. And you wanna pick one of those notes, let's say we're gonna pick A and play this note on the sixth string, then on the fifth string, then on the fourth string, then the third, the second and the first. So we want to go in order. You absolutely must not jump strings. So you're gonna play this. Then you're gonna play the same from string one to string six, again in order. If you can play your note three times, up and down, without making any mistake, slowly, well then you're done with that note and you can move on the next note. If you have five minutes a day, this means you may have time for only one note in that day, or you may have time for all your notes in that day, depending on how fast you are. And it's not important if you're fast or not. Just do what you can right now. A few important things. Yes, you can have the note diagram in front of you and you can watch it while you do the exercise. The important thing is not if you are looking at the diagram or not. The important thing is that your hands are doing the exercise. Two. Notice that I didn't say anything about memorizing anything. 
you don't have to memorize those patterns. Indeed, when you finish all the seven natural notes, you want to restart and redo all the seven notes again, and most likely you'll have to find again the pattern from scratch. This is normal. I myself haven't learned all those patterns yet, and I've been doing this exercise for years. Because the goal of the exercise is not to learn the pattern. By doing this exercise and the next ones, you are going to learn where the notes are. So it's perfectly okay if it feels to you like nothing is happening. It's perfectly okay if it feels to you like you're not learning anything, because you are not supposed to memorize those patterns. Your task is simply to play through this exercise. I cannot stress this enough. Many students get frustrated because it feels to them like they're not learning anything because they can't remember the pattern. Ignore that. Keep playing it. It works if you do it. Now, what about the notes above fret 12? Well, above fret 12, everything repeats, so it's technically not necessary. But if you feel that that part of the fretboard is less familiar to you, well then restrict yourself, for instance, to fret 5 to 16 or something like that. As long as you have a window of 12 frets, everything works. Now, once you've done the basic exercise for all the natural notes and you've done it twice, meaning that you went through all the natural notes twice, then you can practice exercise number two. In exercise number two, we use a metronome. We start with a metronome at 40 beats per minute. And we play one note per beat. Attention here, the metronome is not optional. The metronome, turns out, is exactly what drives your learning of the notes, because it adds just this little bit of pressure. 40 BPM is not that fast but you know that you have to get that note in a finite amount of time and that you have a deadline to find it. So this little bit of pressure is what pushes your brain to actually learn the notes. If you don't do this with the metronome, this system does not work. If this feels difficult at first, don't get discouraged. You just need to go through the motion. Just do the exercises. Everything else will take care of itself. Once you can do exercise two for all the natural notes, you can go to exercise number three. Add in the accidentals, that is, all the sharps and the flats. When you add in the accidentals, you just think of finding the natural notes and moving one fret up for the sharps or one fret down for the flats. So for instance, if you're finding the note A sharp, you are thinking to find A and you move one fret higher. If instead you are finding the note B flat, which we know that formally are the same note, but for us right now those are two different notes, because when you find B flat, you are thinking of finding the note B and moving down one fret. Once you can reasonably do all the sharps and flat with the metronome at 40 BPM, notice that I didn't tell you to speed up, stay at 40 BPM, I know it feels really slow, but trust me here. Once you've done all that, then you can go to exercise number four. In exercise number four, we pick two notes at a time. You can decide if you want to do only natural notes or if you also want to add in the accidentals. It doesn't really make a difference here. Once you've chosen your two notes, you do this. You play one of those notes going up and the other one going down. So for instance, if I'm playing G and D, I'm playing the G note going up and the D note going down without stopping when I change my note. That's an important point. I don't want to stop when I change the note. Always with the metronome. When this starts to feel easy, then you go to exercise number five. In exercise number five, we write down all the natural notes in a random order. For instance, I could write them this way, D, F, C, E, A, G, B. Then, always with a metronome at 40, I'm gonna play the first note D going up, the next note F going down, the next note C going up, 
the next E going down, the next A going up, G going down, B going up. Again, without stopping when you change the note. One note per beat, never stop. Once you can do this exercise, then you can go to exercise number six. In exercise number six, we finally start to increase the speed. And the idea here is to do the exercises from two to five, gradually increasing the speed. When you get to 80 beats per minute, and you can do exercise number five with the random note at 80 beats per minute, then you're done. With the same sequence of notes I've seen before, D, F, C, E, A, G, B, that's how it looks. <laughs> In my experience, when you can play exercise 5 at 80 beats per minute, then you're done. You know your notes. You just know where they are. It's kind of magic if you want to just look at your fretboard and you know where the notes are. Now, I've seen three different kind of reactions to these exercises. The first one is the best one. You just see the exercises, sit down, do the exercises, get better. That's great. If this is your reaction, kudos to you. You're going to learn all the notes on your fretboard. Another reaction I've seen is this. I'm not going to do exercise one to four. I'm going to do exercise five immediately because the other are easy. Well, if you do that, you're shooting yourself in the foot. If you go immediately at exercise number five at a high speed, you're not going to learn your notes because you're going to put too much pressure on you and your brain is not going to learn the right way. Do the first exercise first, then the second, then the third, the fourth, the fifth, and only at the end increase the speed. Maybe it will take you a short time to go through all those exercises, that's great, but don't simply skip them. Do them. Even if it takes just a few minutes to do them, do them anyway. Again, trust me on that. The third reaction I've seen from some student is that they go, ah, this is too complex, it's too hard, it's too long, it's gonna take forever, and then after all, why we actually need to learn the notes, I can do without. Well, I'll tell you what, if you think it's too complex, it's too hard, it's too long, and you're not gonna gain enough, then, well, don't do it. You see, I teach music theory. I'm not a motivational speaker. Even if I wanted to convince you, I'll have no idea how to do it. If the idea of finally making your guitar fretboard a familiar place, where you know exactly where you are and what notes you find and exactly what you're playing at every single moment in time without even have to think. If that does not motivate you to practice a few exercises for five minutes a day, I got nothing for you. I'm not saying that you're lazy or bad or anything. I literally don't know how to motivate you. So if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. The thing I know is that it's very useful to know your notes and it's not as hard to learn it if you just do those exercises in this order. Everybody who I've seen practice all those exercises in this order following all the indication I've given here has learned the notes on their fretboard. No exception. Now, if you like these simple exercises that give you a big return on your investment and if you like playing your guitar, and if you like getting to know new things and getting better and better at playing your guitar and making great music, then I recommend you also check out my course Complete Chord Mastery. Why should you do that? Because Complete Chord Mastery is a course that teaches you everything there is to know about harmony on guitar. If you like writing great chord progression, if you like rearranging song, if you like changing the songs and reharmonizing them, if you like making your guitar sound like a guitar and not just use the same old cowboy chords, then Complete Chord Mastery is the course for you. There are a lot of exercises like those I just showed you in Complete Chord Mastery. We learn by doing, we also learn the theory, but the important point is that we learn by doing and we apply everything we study on the guitar fretboard immediately so that you can actually do 
music and not just talk about music. If you have a minute, click on the link on the top right and check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe and especially click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any suggestions, feedback, comments, write them down in the comments. I love reading from you and I'm doing video based on your suggestion. This is Tommaso Zillio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!